Welcome back DIY car guys. What we got here is a small block Chevy 400. I got a couple of things I want to go over because this is extremely important. We're talking about push rod geometry or rocker geometry on your motor. And there's a couple of things that I haven't seen anyone cover yet. That you should definitely look for, especially when you go bigger on the springs. Because if you don't, you're going to have instability issues, even though you think you have your valve chain geometry correct. And that's what we're talking about today. Now, before you can do anything on your geometry on your motor, make sure whatever rocker you use, that you use the exact same rocker when that motor is running. So whenever you get your geometry, make sure you use the exact same rocker. You can't get this one and get another one and expect it to be the same because all these guys are different right here. I'm telling you, they're all slightly different. They're all gonna have different clearance issues. So let's talk about clearance right now. If you see this guy right here, this is a lash cap. For your valve right what that does it makes this guy come up slightly more to have clearance when your springs get bigger so let me change the angles and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about because this is key okay i have removed the lashing cap just to illustrate this issue here is just a six thousandths filler gauge if i try to get this in here i cannot get it past the top of that valve spring the reason why is because on the back of this guy even after the one that i've cleared it is binding right here. So that is a huge issue. I mean, like you'll put this on, you'll think it's good because it doesn't move. See that it's on the bottom. And it's also, you have to do this on the bottom of the lope of the cam. When it's all the way down on the bottom of the lope, this is where this issue happens. So let me go ahead and pull this guy off and we'll put the lashing cap on there real quick. All right, just got the lashing cap on there. Let's take our filler gauge and let's try to pull it up. And now we can barely, so barely get this guy in between the rocker and the spring right here. There's a couple different ways that guys find their geometry for their small block Chevy stuff, 20 degree stuff. They, there's a tool like this that you put on there, which will put it in the center. And there's another way where they draw a line from the middle of this, the middle of that. Then they go half a distance and then they bring up the push rod and that's your geometry. That's kind of that method in a nutshell. I don't use either one of these because I have not had luck with not wearing out guides using these two methods. So what happens is this guy goes up and down and pushes this guy in right here. I mean, the ideal way for this guy to be and to push your valve up and down is going to be like this. Up and down. Right? But we don't have that. This sits on, on 20 degree small block Chevy stuff. This ships on a stud. And you got a fixed given range of geometry that you can work with. So as it pushes this down, if your sweep is large, what it does is pushing this way on your valve, which kind of turns it like this. And when it comes back up, it pushes it that way on the valve. So the longer that sweep is on there, the more movement you're gonna have like this. And both of those methods, like I showed you before, they have produced some of the biggest sweeps on these 23 degree small black Chevy stuff. If you don't believe me, ask any really good head guy or anyone who's worked on stuff a long time and they'll tell you that putting it in the middle, they have found too many worn out guides using those methods. And they always say use the sweep method to produce the smallest sweep you can use or you can gain within given parameters right here. There's gonna be some push and shove on this to get it to work. But the idea is to get that sweep as small as possible. Okay, so this, this sweep right here I'm about to show you guys is the most in the middle we can get before this rocker bottoms out on the spring right here. That's kind of moved a little bit. Let me pull this guy out. Oh, and this, we can see exactly what we got here because I'm using, I got an abundance of push rods that I use. This is an eight inch and 50 thousandths push rod, 105 wall, used on another setup. I keep these to the point where I almost don't even need a push rod tool to get it right. So let's go ahead and measure our sweep on this guy. All 
Let me get just to the edge of that sweep so we can see how big it is. Right there. So our sweep right now is 111 thousandths. So we got our first measurement recorded right here with an eight inch 50 thousandths push rod. Let's go to the next size. So we're gonna swap this guy out. We're gonna move it down the line and we'll get a fresh one right here and throw it on there. Like I said, you gotta be on the bottom of the lope with the cam. This one, this push rod right here is eight inches, 100 thousandths. So it's 50 thousandths taller than the other one. And I'm, if you look in right here, we will have more clearance between these guys because it's slightly taller. So it's moving this guy up just a little bit more to have more clearance than this guy right here. So we're all the way up, it is tight. Let's go ahead and rotate the motor over. I like to have it all locked down exactly how the motor's gonna run. So I, I prefer to take my sweeps, the measurement for the sweeps with everything pretty much how it's gonna be. Of course, we're not gonna put everyone on right now just to get proper push rods. I like to have all this locked down because we're talking about springs that are 300 pounds closed and 600 open. So you can see there's a lot. So I don't want to see anything that's flexing on that stud. All right, like I said, we got all the slack taken out. Let's go ahead and rotate it over. Do it like three times. Just to get us a good imprint on there. All right, back in the bottom. Let's take her off. Let's check out the sweep. Uh, that one's a little hard to see for sure. It didn't have as much wear, but we can still see the sweep pattern, the two edges. So let me go ahead and pull her up right to where I don't see it. Right there. Okay, we got it now. That looks to be about right. A little more. All right, there. Our sweep now is 80 thousandths. See how it's getting smaller? So we got the eight inch 50 thousandths, 200 thousandths. You can see how the sweep's getting smaller. We're gonna go one more, that's about as far as we can go. It's gonna be uh, eight inches, 125 thousandths. Let's see where our, that gets us. All right. And I could definitely be off by a little bit there, but it appears the sweep went kind of back up on that end. Maybe it's starting to approaching too far on the side of that lashing cap. And here's our three samples right here. So you can see the eight inch 50 thousandths push rod had the largest sweep. And I still think it was slightly off center that way towards the exhaust. And I guarantee you, if we were to pull that up even closer to the center, this sweep would have probably got even bigger. The eight inch 100 thousandths was 80. And the best I could tell, we got even larger when we went eight inches 125 thousandths. So I'm gonna go with this guy right here. I'm gonna say that's gonna be my best option to give me the best clearance around the spring. And it's gonna give me the smallest sweep. I think that's pretty much it for this guy today. I got the push rods ordered, they're coming in the mail, and I think that's pretty much it. Once I get that in the mail, I can finally do the complete assembly in this guy and get her in the old S10 over there. Now the LT1, I am not getting rid of it. That motor it works perfectly well. I'm trying to think of what I wanna put in. I really wanna put it in a station wagon old Volvo. I think that would be absolutely awesome. I got a transmission down there. And I wouldn't really need too much just to you know, fabricate some mounts for it and find some headers that'll fit. 
And if we can do some rips in a Volvo, I think that would be just completely awesome and a great sleeper. But until next time, guys, if you guys want to see those videos, don't forget to subscribe. And I got more videos coming, so hit that bell for notifications also. If you want to be informed of my videos coming up. Keep on wrenching, guys. Peace. <laughs>